All right, so this was a viewer submitted Just Guy Temple list. It's very close to the Just Guy Temple list that's on my website, though. I like a lot of the choices that are made here. One thing we got that's a little bit cheeky is there's an Archangel Avacyn in the sideboard, which seems like a sweet extra threat. Can save, save some of your other cards. It's a pseudo sweeper at times two, so let's go ahead and dive on into a league with this one and see how it goes. Morning Troll. Avacyn. Avacyn was one of my favorite cards when she was standard legal. Card's real sweet. Feeling better? A little bit. I slept better last night. Still, still semi-plague-ridden. I believe there's an explanation of quest mode here. Look at that. And if you're MTG bot, apparently prying questions is the closest magic card to quest mode. Who'd have thought? Hey, Cajun guy. Thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. Man. These cards could be anything. Even a fourth opt. All right. Turn one land war reborn means I want to start digging for removal spells to my opponents playing hardened scales. And again, just like fair deck trying to be interactive, like if... I keep a hand, if I keep this hand and we're playing like a blue-white mirror match, this hand's like absurd, but I keep this hand and my opponent's playing this archetype and all of a sudden like my hand becomes much, much worse. So, I think I'm supposed to opt in response here looking for Spell Snare or Bolt. I found neither, so I think the option is Cry Silently. Maybe Cry Loudly. Would I play if I had a modern event and you wanted to win? Uh, I'd probably skip the tournament and do something else. Play playing modern with the intention of winning is like a recipe for just like being said. Well, the good, the good news is we have a lot of good sideboard cards for this. <clears throat> for an artifact matchup. Is Leyline of the Void a reasonable card against the Urza decks? Depends on which part of the Urza deck you lose to. I agree with Draven's assessment. Uh, I'd probably add Valica Titan to that list. I think Burn, Tron, Wurza, and Valica Titan would be my my top four decks right now. Those would be those would be my tier one. I personally don't enjoy playing any of those decks though. My uh, my bad creature combo deck of choice of late is the Sahili combo deck. Looking, looking forward to playing that deck with Once Upon a Time. <clears throat> Are we the baddies? No, Tefri, Tefri Time Raveler is is what makes you one of the good guys in modern. Modern, modern is such a messed up format that playing Tefri Time Raveler makes you one of the good guys here. Sure, this is modern, Chewy. There's like two dozen decks that can win a tournament at any given point.
Okay, I'd like to path this one. I'd like to snap path whatever you put the counters on. Hey, Furious Squirrel. Thanks for the 22 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. He's dead. I'm going to 13. I assume maybe they want to land. Evolutionary leap. Uh, can't win has been declared. Feels, feels like we've hit solidly can't win territory with evolutionary leap coming down. I would have saved myself two damage if I would have passed the ballista in response to the counters. You would have saved yourself a 10 minute timeout if you'd have looked at the board state before making that comment. All right, so path is great, rejection's great, <clears throat> a breed's good, Stony's good, D Sphere's great, Archangel Avison seems fine. This is not a veto matchup. This is not a spell queller Tefri matchup. It's like pretty clean. Some bits for the A plus response plus the Swift timeout combo. Thanks. More to more car. And for reference, the reason why I didn't path their thing in response to the arcbound trigger was because my path to exile was still on the stack. So you can't you can't snap back a card that's still on the stack. Well, there's still a force negation here. That should probably be cut. <clears throat> It's fine. They have some some good non-creature spells. Thanks for the five months, Cody. Welcome back. I appreciate that. No longer subscriber chat. Now we're in sub mode. Just have just have a lower tolerance for people suggesting that I made a bad play because I didn't make an illegal play when I'm feeling sick. Mox Opal is just such an incredibly reasonable magic card. That's true. That's true. It, if you cheat, you would definitely win more games of magic. Them's, them's just the facts. The fake, the fake news media doesn't want you to know. If you just cheat, you will win more. Quest mode is, uh, it's kind of a neat service that uh, sponsors uh, F2K. And what they allow you to do is they allow you to 
earn free subs, tips, and prizes by playing playing different games on both desktop and mobile. If you follow follow my link there, you can check them out. Hey, Marion, thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. Oh, I basically can never beat that card. <clears throat> this card just means every time we try to kill a creature, it instead... It instead gets turned into something else. Oh, that's a good suggestion. Thank you for that legit advice. Okay. Username, you, username checks out. <clears throat> All right, settings saved. All right, sweet. The bot no longer appears on stream. All right, excellent. Just play Enchantment Silence to get around the Evolutionary Leap. Yeah, exactly. That is actually a pretty sweet draw. Let's me spread them off their creature land here. Evolutionary Leap is just like the single best card against control out of the opponent's archetype, having played my fair share of hardened scales in the past. They have, they have Mox Opal in play, Pift. Yeah, like, now this Arcbound Worker makes Animation Module tokens, which make Evolutionary Leap things. Maybe, maybe on the back of Snap, Bolt, and then Celestial Colonnade, we can race here. Maybe. We do, we do kill them in three in the air after we Snap, Bolt their face. Maybe it's the, I'm a really bad, a really bad pure mathematician. My, my principles surrounding approach to pure mathematics are definitely more in line with like what physicists tend to do. Like when I see like the math on things like once upon a time, they look at it and go, yeah, it says this card's great. That's, that's what we knew the card was great, right? Like. Do we, do we need, do we need to meaningfully quantify? Like, like what, what do we actually really gain? Like how, how much is meaningfully gained by quantifying the level of how great it is, I guess would be my question. Well, it's not a hangerback walker. 
Although we're probably just dead here from this mowing us down, huh? Helps the tooling decks around once upon a time. In what, in what way? He said with four, he would go down two creatures and two lands. Yeah, I mean, I... Alright, I guess, I guess me, maybe my intuition is just better than most people's, but like, I didn't need to do any math to look at that card and go, yeah, this card, it makes sense to cut two creatures and two lands, right? Does that make sense? Like... I read, I read the card and the first thing I did when, we, when I started making changes to decks was, oh, the thing that makes sense to do with this card is cut two creatures and two lands. Because, like, it's a card that's going to help us find both of those things, so let's cut equal parts, right? It's, it's a lot like, like what jumps to my mind is, like, when we talk about hyper hyper geometric distribution calculations and like then in, in a lot of the time when you're doing hyper geometric distribution calculations you can spend a lot of effort to get a really precise calculation but the amount of effort you spend and the amount of precision you gain often isn't proportional like a lot of the time you do a lot of work to not gain a lot of precision. Are we dead? Are we dead with double path? I mean, I probably should have pathed this in response, huh? I think, I think we're alive. I think I just like path this and then like path it again, right? More than just lucky. Yeah, I'm going to path it again in response to them modular onto this. And then they'll die to colonnade next turn. And this, this really kind of highlights the power of Jeskai versus a a straight blue white strategy like my opponent played played this played a card this game that we could just never answer and never beat going long and instead we we're able to snap bolt them and then race them down that's something blue white struggles to do uh generally speaking kylo until the new set releases i'm going to be doing uh magic online till about 10 a.m or so every day Today is going to be a little bit longer because uh, the arena segment doesn't start till the arena tournament doesn't start till eleven. Arena tournament doesn't start till eleven. Although there might be there might be some downtime in the middle while we fumble to update arena. The rivals tournament is forty players. And it's the best kind of tournament because we all get a hundred bucks just for showing up. Can win, can win zero games, and still get dollar dues. It's a great system. Thanks, Dragon. Oh, we did, we did actually have an answer to Leap last turn. You have to play every game if you go 0-2? Nope. It's great. Get, get paid and can still, can still bow out. 
Yes, yes, it is a streamer tournament. Rejected. Oh. Oh. Mm. Mm. The jury might need to might need to talk about it for a minute. But how is that draw? What do we what do we what do we think about that one? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, chat. Chat, they found our one weakness. Oh no. I drew my sideboard card and they drew their anti-sideboard card. Oh man. <clears throat> peak, peak modern right there. This is this is where the modern happens. I says, excuse me? Squeeze me? Excuse a while? So we're gonna field of rune, the ink moth nexus here, grab a second island. Uh, am I in for a land? Yeah, let's just look for another Doom Blade. All right, let's send Scrapyard here to detention. The welding jar this. We'll snap bolt it. All right. <clears throat> Can also snap rejection here. First comment and subscribing. I, I wanted this to be funny. So I tried looking online for a joke to make everyone laugh. Unfortunately, no pun intended. <laughs> I hope you have children. I just want you to know by making that joke, if you don't currently have children, you now have a child somewhere most likely. You've brought this on yourself. So I didn't snap bolt before I took damage there for two reasons. The first is that my health total is a little is still pretty high, so I can use it as a resource here. The second is that I wanted to be able to snap rejection or spell snare something else if they played it. So I end up taking um, three extra points of damage here by sequencing this way, but I think that's fine. A T banks. Whoa, 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 whoa! All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna say magic online lagged a little bit, and I accidentally passed through my turn there. It might, it might end up working out because I bolted this, and now, uh, now I still have spell snare up. I'm just going up on, on Tefri here. If we draw a Snapple Caster Mage or something of the sort, we can re reuse it with old Tefri's down tick. Need to kill them at some point, but eh. I really like to draw a Celestial Colonnade. Yeah, that's fine. I might just bounce that for now. 
kind of want to draw a card anyways. We can cut them off colorless with spreading seas. Yeah, exactly. I'll play right into our play right into our plan. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. We could just uh, do the old the old spreading seas bounce. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bolt this, knowing that they could sack a bunch of artifacts to save it. If they sack a bunch of artifacts to save it, Tefri will just bounce it back to their hand again. Since I have D-Sphere in my hand, I'm just going to go ahead and spell snare this. Sure. I do want to keep both my cards. It's a good draw. All right, let the slow, let the slow grind begin. Opponent, opponent's had enough. They're like, all right, this Vendillion click's gonna go the distance. It's going fall speed. It's all alone in the time of need. It's racing and pacing and plotting the calls. Do, 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 All right, scoreboard. Things are things are looking up. Yeah, yeah, essentially Tsuna Yummy. I was holding on to it for a creature land. Um, I also just like had enough lands that like, if they played something that I needed to answer, I like playing it to draw a card later, like wasn't a big deal. Uh, yeah, that's the end sweet. I'm gonna bottom a land here, I think. Maybe a little bit greedy. There were two Kiki decks in the top eight again. Oh yeah, they were um, they were like a, a teamer Kiki amalgamation, right? If so, I believe I did see those. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Spire Bluff Canal, sleight of hand, uh, indicative of storm. Usually, I believe in this format. I shocked this in so I could go ahead and bolt this on two. Or on my one there, turn two. Yeah, there's two spreading seas in the main. I think the spreading seas in the main are great. If you want to read about this de this archetype and a lot of the card choices in it, it's not identical to this list, but it's pretty close. You can find it, uh, find that on Cool Stuff Inc. there at my articles link. I wrote about it last month or the month before. Spreading, spreading seas is a card that just has a very high floor. Even when it's at its worst, it still just draws a card, which makes it pretty reasonable. They don't give me anything to veto or helix here. I'm probably going to snap both them just so I can get a clock on the table and start killing them. <clears throat> I 
So I assume this is an end step ritual into gifts, which I'm just going to veto here. And then hopefully they don't kill us when they untap. I think it's correct to veto this. We could definitely die next turn. But we could die next turn regardless, so. Hey, well, thanks for the support, Neckfire. I appreciate it. Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime pays my bills, so thanks for keeping me around. Have to hold up Spell Snare here, so... They're coming up pretty well for us here. Yeah, their draw's been pretty okay, but our draw's been pretty disruptive. I think this matchup's okay for us on average. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna Spell Snare this. I really don't want them to, like, resolve gifts here or anything like that. Will there be a delay for Twitch Rivals? Uh, they've not decided that yet. They're still, they're still communicating in the group trying to figure out what, what exactly is happening. If there, if there is a delay, it's only going to be one minute. Which, I'd rather have no, in general, I, I prefer these events to have a delay. Just to prevent other people's chats from being jerks, but... One, one minute doesn't really do anything meaningful and it just makes the content worse. So hopefully, hopefully they do an actual delay or nothing. Hey, Trax, thanks for the host. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Uh, I submitted Aristocrats for the event today. All right, so they do in fact just have a gift given here. I think it's right for me to tap out here at the end of turn just because I need to like start killing them. If I give them, if I give them enough time, they're going to, they're going to combo me at some point. So you need to like put pressure into play and end the game. Yeah, the deck's pretty close to the list we've played traditionally. It lost uh, Goblin Fire, the Goblin, whatever his name is, the one drop, and it lost the Dragon Skull Summit. So we've got some tapped lands, among other things. I'm going to ditch Past in Flames and Manamorphose here. This way they don't get the ability to draw a card. And then, like, I can snap Veto, Past in Flames, when they flash it back next turn. Yeah, Fanatical Firebrand, Diagonal Goblin. Uh, the Aristocrats deck is an aggressive deck. Plays 10 one drops. So I'm pretty sure I just do this and then like hope the snap veto beats them. If their last card's remand here, we're dead. Or unsubstantiate, because they can remand or unsubstantiate the Snapcaster Mage. But if it's not a piece of interaction, this should hopefully blow their load. Uh, if we're counting removal spells as one drops, the deck plays like 13 one drops. Yeah, every, everything in the new format is slower, basically. So, like, what determines fast enough varies format to format. So, like, without the check lands and everybody playing some life gain lands or monocolored things, and the monocolored decks, like, losing their quality of cards, like, the entire format is slower than the current standard format. Yeah, aggro, aggro is relative. Exactly correct. I like how they floated blue when I... That's funny. I think I just bounced this. 
Oh, you know, I probably should have left up blue red here. Yep, totally should have left up blue red. Probably doesn't matter. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Yeah, there's there's decks in the format that pressure you jinx, but they're they they provide they establish less pressure than the aggro decks in the current standard format. <clears throat> Yeah, the mana base on the Teamer Elemental deck's just really bad. Without the check lands. I feel like the Teamer Elemental deck's gonna be the deck this season where it's like, well, when you can cast your spells, this deck's really good. But there's a lot of games where you just can't cast your spells. It's like when I when I play magic, my deck is good, but I frequently am just not playing magic. Alright, I actually want this Celestial Purge because it kills. Electromancer and it exiles Aria Flame. I think I'm gonna trim some paths here in a helix. Yeah, but it also could have been like a spell snare or an optimist bits. I don't think this is an Ashiok matchup. Like while they use Oh, Ashiok stops gifts too. Huh. I was going to say, the graveyard text isn't good enough. The fact that it shuts down gifts is interesting, though. Now, if I just trim a couple copies of Opt. Let's do that. I guess Time Raveler is only okay here. You want me to cut my negates against the Storm deck? You're crazy. You're 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 insane. <clears throat> you don't you don't cut negates. You don't cut negates against the Storm deck, especially the free negate. Force Force of Negation is absurd against Pass and Flames because it exiles it when they cast the front half. You also really don't want to cut any of your, <clears throat> you don't want to cut any of your uh, pressure. The, com the combo decks will kill you if you give them infinite time. You need to keep your cards that actually end the game in your deck. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I expect my opponent to have some combination of empty the Warriors, which is why Detention Sphere is great here. As well as Aria Flame, which Detention Sphere is also good against. I just, I like this card in general in this format. I think it's really sweet. Sphere, Sphere is just incredibly flexible. Yeah, the, the Exile, the spell text is like super relevant in a lot of random places. Speaking of empty... Hey, thanks for the 15 months, Sailor Dark. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. They put Empty and Pyretic Ritual into their hand. Correct, yeah. Yeah, in fact, um, Tefri, that's why we leave a couple of Tefris in. He can bounce the Sphere. Is exactly correct. Of course, Neckfire. We aim to please. Scrubs, thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. <clears throat> Go ahead and kill this in response. That they like pop off making a bunch of other mana here and like empty for a bunch it's like not a big deal because i have detention sphere i 
and this this forces them to tap out here so if they do empty here um if they do empty here they won't have mana up to uh to kill a goblin in response to my detention sphere Yeah, we, we could theoretically die from here, but it's pretty unlikely. And we're dead. Okie doke. Actu actually dead, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, actual, actual factual dead. Is it? Do they have enough? Do they have enough to generate enough storm count here? Because they they only have one grape shot, right? <clears throat> Death is the final frontier. Yep. Oh, they have Aria Flame. All right. Yeah. Now we're definitely dead. Sound sounds good. As you as you will. Hand was all rituals. Second. Second creature pass in flames. Yep. Seems seems pretty decent. Manamorphos is a messed up Magic the Gathering card in case anyone in case anyone was wondering. Card is pretty absurd. My opponent did all that starting their turn with an empty board. So they, they started that turn with an empty board and I had a removal spell and we died there. <clears throat> I'm really glad they finally unbanned Stoneforge Mystic. It was just such a bad joke that that card wasn't legal. Such a bad joke. I agree. Manamorphos is very similar to Taxian Probe. Hey, Bruno, thanks for the 13 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. If you're having a good one wherever you are. Sure. Never draw another spell and be sad that we kept that. Ooh, there's a spell if I ever saw one. You just named all of them, Space Ace. Those four. Those four, those four sound great. Get rid of them. What condiment do I eat with my French fries? Ketchup or ranch? One of the two. Sometimes, sometimes mayo, cheese guy. Yeah, I'm really like any, everything goes with potatoes, chat. Everything, everything goes with potatoes. I, I eat all of those things with some. Ranch, ranch, mayo, ketchup, cheese. <clears throat> honey mustard, honey mustard is good. You know, I feel like I'm betraying my people as an overweight American by saying this. But I actually don't really care for Nutella. I'm actually not, not a big, not a big Nutella fan. Ketchup or ranch or mayo or sauce, I agree. Babygambles.gov, thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Your tweet earlier about politics being life cemented why I like you. And then you go online and say you eat ranch and ranch on fries and destroy all that goodwill. <laughs> Listen, we have a lot of really controversial opinions here. And while, while we're pissing people off with opinions about ranch, remember, there's two types of people in the world. People who like pineapple on their pizza and people who are wrong. Make sure, make sure you're in the right category, chat.
Listen, I figure if we're gonna piss people off with food opinions, we should just run the whole nine yards, okay? There's a Greek place near me that I frequent, and they have fries, and they have a special sauce. Yeah, ziti sauce. Greek, the Greek, whatever the Greek sauce is, is good on fries, too. Yep, they can't kill a goblin in response because of Tefri, so send all of these goblins to detention. And then Tefri would like to repurchase this, please. God, God bless us, everyone. Your move. Your move, Yugi boy. This is all I got. We unfortunately did not find a fourth land there. Draken, thanks for 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I'm pretty sure I want to just use my no button on this one. Dalen, thank you for the 11 months of support there. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Um, I'm going to draw a step click here, I think, and just get a clock going. Um, these cards don't actually do anything, right? So it's like, yeah, you can keep them. These are, for reference, the best Vendillion clicks ever are the ones where you look at their hand and you go, yep, keep them. <clears throat> those, those are the best Vendillion clicks where you just get to be like, yep, nope, get out of here. Ashiox, a decent pickup. Um... On a land that makes that makes a color that's unfortunate although spell queller with this tefri is pretty good so it's not too unfortunate i suppose Let's get him out of there. So, do I hold up? I think I'm just supposed to hold up Spell Queller here, right? Like with, with Tefri, there's really no point in like jamming the Ashiok right away. It, it feels like this is, uh, this is kind of like veering into build your own adventure book. There's no wrong choices, all roads lead to Rome. I'm not subscribed because I'm broke. Che cheering via watching commercials is the way I'm allowed to chat. Am I abusing the cheer? No, that's fine. If you if you want to throw me a penny every time you want to chat, that's an A-OK -okay way to do it. Sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate the pennies, Kid Martin. Puts them to nine. So I probably want to bolt them, because then if I draw a bolt to Helix or a Snapcaster Mage, they die next turn. Sure. So their hand is Pyretic Ritual plus one card I don't know, so I think I'm going to go ahead and Spell Queller. If they hit like a Grape Shot, I get pretty sad here, so I'd prefer they don't Grape Shot. I 
Hey, Dows, thanks for the gift sub. I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, if their last card's Grape Shot, we could actually be in a little bit of trouble. Man, that's super unfortunate. This lets them recast... Um, This clears our board. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to bolt the spell queller in response, right? Because bolting the spell queller in response denies them the recast on the serum visions. Because the Tefri's still in play. All right, so which angle of attack do we take here? <clears throat> if they draw past in flames, the graveyard just slaughters me, right? No, the first grape shot was dealing the last point of damage to the spell queller. I think I'm just supposed to Ashiok here. The problem, the problem with Ashioking first is Ashiok means that if they draw any instant or sorcery, this kills Ashiok. Ashiok does not make gifts of dead draw because they have an Aria Flame sitting on three. I think I just play this and hope they brick for a turn. Sweet. And this this cuts a lot of their outs. Someone asked, do I mill myself or mill them? Like, definitely them. And exiles what we're milling. <clears throat> We can like, they don't have that many win conditions to here, so we can like randomly clear past all their win cons, which is sweet. So a lot of the times these decks cut past in flames post board. <clears throat> so I think it's pretty correct to take Daria flame off the table. Snap Bolt Burrell here. They've, they've had enough. Makes sense. The arena event doesn't start for another hour and a half, so even if this league runs long, we'll have plenty of time. I plan to play this league out because I like this one. Hey, Legit Reaper, thanks for getting out a sub gifty. Happy Tuesday to you. Welcome, welcome. All right, I'm going to grab a snack really quick. Beer beam. There is a Twitch rival streamer tournament today with 40, 40 different streamers slash MPL members in it that are playing M20 standard. So that's this current standard format with the sets that are rotating out, not legal.
No, I think ban banning Allosaurus Rider would be silly. <clears throat> I would... I would ban Simeon Spirit Guide. That's a card that actually deserves to be banned. So, I mean, Simeon Spirit Guide and Mox Opal have both well overstayed their welcome <clears throat> and should not be legal in modern. Awesome, Reaper. This matchup is really hard. <clears throat> the, uh, the Wurza deck basically dumps all over anything remotely fair. Basically just can't win from here. <clears throat> this thing's this thing's one four for some reason. Like you have to you have to balance like not getting combo killed with not getting ground out naturally by sword plus thopter with not getting ground out by this card drawing them two cards per turn. Yeah, I'm just going to concede Move on to the next game. We're not winning. We just have too many dead cards in our hand. Yeah, uh, Dows. Any any dollars you send here are good for are are good for deck cube points. So, just let me know what you'd like to bump up. I'm happy to add five points to it. Thanks for the half a year, Toast Masher. Is Urza the new twin? The Urza deck is much better than Splinter Twin ever was or ever could be. Hot take. Someone asked if I think Modern Horizons was a mistake. In my opinion, if Wizards of the Coast is not failing on occasion, they're not innovating enough. And I think there are a few design failures from Modern Horizons, but I also think that's normal, natural, and fine, and to be expected. I think a set like Modern Horizons had the intention of pushing the boundaries, and it did that. I think it will be a failure if they don't manage things with a ban list. But with the banning of Faithless Looting, I have some small amount of hope that actual management of the format is something we're going to see moving forward. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, that's true. I need to push that more. I need to have my graphics guy make up uh, a banner to put on screen. Oh, look at that. A card that turns my deck off. Weird. 
I'm going to go to the next one. Will do Dows. Thanks for it. As a, a special promo, someone put the popcorn command there in chat. My oldest son started Cub Scouts this year. And they sell popcorn and candy and I think coffee in there as a fundraiser every year. So if you were thinking about adding a deck to the deck queue anyways, if you buy anything off the popcorn website using Jake's code there and send me the confirmation that you purchased something, um, I will allow you to add something to the deck queue for whatever amount of money you spent on popcorn and other goodies on that site. So... If you're thinking about sending me some dollars, get yourself a treat to go along with it and still still get something added or bumped in the queue. I don't think they do outside the U.S., unfortunately. I'm not 100% sure. I should check their site and think, but I'm pretty sure they're U.S. only. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, it's fine in the dark. Needs a, needs a third land at some point, but a you know, high land count deck. <clears throat> Next level popcorn slinging through Twitch. I'm doing the same snaz right now. Yep. My oldest is only five. So like when he's a little bit older, I'm going to make him make some effort to actually sell some himself, but he hasn't, he hasn't really quite grasped the concept yet. So Figure if I can sell his minimum quota or more on on here, that sounds easy. You're not going to make him stand outside of a grocery store and awkwardly ask people to purchase something? I am not. <clears throat> what price is he aiming for if he sells a certain amount? I didn't show him the price sheet. <clears throat> my kids, my kids have enough stuff. You know, have plenty, plenty of stuffs. In fact, I'd, I'd prefer if there was just, like, less stuffs in general. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do a house tour sometime and I can show you that they have too much stuff. Um, I think I want to get my red source here. It might be right to get Sacred Foundry over Steam Vents here just because I have Dub's, Dub's Path. Drawing another fetch here is great. Opponent looks to be playing Death Shadow. This matchup tends to be okay for Archetype in my experience. Just because once they hammer their health total low, we have burn spells to finish them off and we have path to exiles to kill their large threats. So not unlosable by any means, but definitely favorable for our side, I think. <clears throat> I'm going to add the Twitch Rivals deck to the stream title. We're playing Aristocrats today.
Yeah, I'm definitely playing four nights today. I thought about playing spawn, but the problem with spawn is that um, <clears throat> the mana base as constructed kind of sucks. It only has 14 black sources, so casting spawn consistently is kind of tough. Uh, I will post the... I will post the aristocrats list I submitted in the in the deck in the uh <clears throat> in the Discord now. Only kind of change I deviated from from the list on my site is I added uh what's it called? I added a main deck copy of <clears throat> Added a main deck, main deck to vaults. Yeah, I just don't like assuming. I don't like assuming that Priest is going to live, Zazu, because, like, if Priest is living, you're probably winning the game regardless of what your other threats are. Knight is so much better than Gutter Bones. I can't even put into words how much better Knight is than Gutter Bones. So you're right that Gutter Bones is better with Priest. But again, the thing that people incorrectly do a lot of the time is that they're making decisions to maximize their cards that are already good when they're working. So like... You don't need to like play cards that are extra good with Priest when your Priest is active. Because guess what? If your Priest is active, you're winning the game. Whereas Knight is just an individually powerful card that's good even when Priest isn't active. Yeah, four, 14 blacks correct. It's just not enough to consistently play Spawn of Mayhem. We just bring in a bunch of removal spells here. We just basically want as many cards as possible that play to the board. Archangel Iverson actually seems pretty reasonable here. Because <clears throat> she uh, flashes in and doesn't die to Fatal Push, which is sweet. Seems fine. I don't know that that's strictly true. <clears throat> the uh, the field deck I'm expecting the most of today is the Golos Gates variation. And they tend to play Time Wipe and Gates of Blaze, both of which kill spawn. Yes, Charles. <clears throat> yep, you can you can bump a deck or you can submit decks with the with the popcorn purchase too. And the 
The minimum popcorn order, I believe, is $30, so you can even submit build-arounds with that. So if there's a particular card or subset of cards you want to add a build-around with, you're all welcome to do that as well. So this hand's not particularly good, but again, against decks full of discard spells, you just like cross your fingers and hope to draw good cards off the top. Because you're not going to have a hand anyways. Neoform combo with the new green spell. Yeah, definitely. Neoform in general is a deck I'll take. I think that deck's really sweet. It's going well, Togobogle. Happy Tuesday. I'm a little, little bit under the weather, but not too bad otherwise. Well, my opponent doesn't have lands. I don't have spells. Welcome to Modern. Enjoy your stay. It would have been really sweet if we drew a land instead of that Celestial Purge. Their discard spell would have missed. Uh, just DM me your a picture of your uh, receipt with the order confirmation number. You can block out your address or whatever and let me know which deck it's for, Charles. You can send it on Discord or email it to me. Either, whatever more convenient for you. Iron Mellow, thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. In cases like this where you have multiple fetches, do you think the deck thinning is relevant? So rather than using my feelings and telling you what I think, I'm just going to tell you that no, statistically it's not significant. Yeah, yeah, welcome to Thunderdome opponent. I don't think there's a meaningful reason, reason to not play the red cards, Iron Mellow. If you look at what this deck is, this deck is basically a blue-white flash deck with Bolts and Helix. And like, with the fetch land mana bases we have in Modern, it's just so easy to... It's so easy to add the third color, and the, the cards you gain from the third color are really powerful. <clears throat> The one big downside associated with adding a third color in modern is taking damage from your lands. And the fact that you're, yeah, exactly, Nemo Fury Cover. The fact that you're playing Lightning Helix as one of your splash cards makes that downside basically non existent. The popcorn promo is great, is what it is. In fact, I have some of the popcorn upstairs. I keep meaning to bring it down. When we, we run our next ad break, I'll probably run up and grab it. Yeah, primarily Valakut. They're also they're also good against Tron though. The three decks I would bring them in against are Valakut, Tron, and uh, that uh, Lotus Field Storm deck. All right, so they put this Gurmag into play. Do I want to just try and kill them? I think I want to just try and kill them, huh? This is a little scary if they have Death Shadow in their hand, which they probably do. But I think we just try and race. Uh, Alpine Moon's only okay against Amulet Titan. You probably bring it in there and name like Cavern or their Hasteland, but it's not great in that matchup. I don't know, if they play like Shadow Shadow here, like racing is off the table, right? Although any Bolt or Helix is lethal next turn, so there's that going for us too. This is, uh, this is like a removal spell in a way, because their graveyard's currently empty. I love it when a plan comes together, chat. 
I love it when a plan comes together. Never forget the magic is an incredibly low base, low, low variant skill based game and the better player always wins. <clears throat> never, never forget chat. All right, this league's running long, but the next, uh, the Magic Arena thing doesn't start for another hour and 15 minutes yet. So I'm gonna play the fifth match because I like this deck. And I'm gonna go ahead and run an ad and run upstairs and snake, snake some of that popcorn to bring down, BRB. Uh, someone else actually already gifted them a sub reaper because Hoaglandia is great. I appreciate you all. All right, on second thought, bringing the entire bag of popcorn down here might have been a little dangerous. <clears throat> might be. That like the entire bag of popcorn might not be long for the world. I also brought, I also have some cheddar cheese popcorn. That one might be bad to eat with the keyboard though. That one, that one might not be good for the keyboard health. <sighs> Full screen show. You have the ability to stop once you start, right? Full, uh, full Omnath popcorn, right? Give them, give them the Omnath treatment. That's true. My keyboard, my keyboard is pushing on a couple of years now. And it is just a $10 Amazon's Basics or HP keyboard. They probably swap it out at some point. Just a jar of mayo. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for the 12 months of support. Is Narset Cannon still playable? I don't think so. Unfortunately. I feel like I should probably buy a high quality keyboard at some point. Like it feels like one of those things I should probably just like give a fair shake to. Ever tried peanut butter on a Rice Krispie Treat? They actually make Rice Krispie Treats with peanut butter in them. And they are great. They are, they are quite fantastic. You gotta, I need, we need a keyboard sponsor. I need a, peri I need peripherals. <clears throat> the real question is, if I make a deep run in this Rivals tournament, how much am I going to regret starting my stream at my normal 7 a.m. time this morning?
if we if we do well in the, if I do well in the rivals tournament, it's gonna be like six or seven hours. That's true. That's true. Top price is like five grand. What is what's the breakdown? Yeah, it's five five thousand to first, four thousand to second, two thousand to third, fourth, and then fifth through tenth is a grand. Wait, is this thing not a cut to top eight? Yeah, there. I'm pretty sure it's a cut to top eight. <clears throat> we got you, the kid, Martin. Yeah, it's just the pricing is weird, right? Cause like, if it's a, it's prized like it's a cut to top four, because generally speaking, cuts to top eight, the prize structure changes at nine. But like, the prizes for this thing are first and second are different, third, fourth are the same thing, and then fifth through tenth is the same thing. Weird. Yeah, it looks like it is a cut to top eight. There's just like different prizes based on tiebreakers for nine ten. Strange. I guess I guess if you get unlucky and miss top eight on breakers, then you can still be happy because you got slightly more money. As someone as someone who's de destined to always miss things on breakers, I guess that I guess that's fine. I don't have any command set up. I'm a lazy boy. Thanks, twin. Storm again? Weird they didn't have any cantrips. Uh, starts at 11 a.m., so now we're in 10 minutes from now. Max owns the world. Thanks for the 12 months of support. I appreciate it. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Barely, barely missing top eight. Gets the same prize losing in the quarters. So we're going to be 11th on breakers today. Yeah, ba basically, for anybody who's paying attention, that means we're getting 11th on breakers. That is, that is exactly what that means. Uh, I haven't decided yet what we're doing beforehand. We're probably gonna have some time between when this match finishes and when the next. Oh, I have to. I have to try and update arena. That's that's what we're doing in between. There's supposed to be an arena patch starting in ten minutes, and the maintenance window is from ten to eleven. <clears throat> so normally, I don't fumble with arena updates on stream. Uh, we're playing Black Red Aristocrats today. Double Gift Sun given. Ascension. Gross. I definitely think they should have kept Gift during their end step there. So I've got Veto for the Gifts. I've got Snare for the Ascension. I 
They're usually pretty slow about updating their MSI installers, so I actually I actually set it up last night. I set it up last night because on my Windows computer so I could stream it from there using Steam streaming service. So that that might be something I have to do too. That might take a little bit of time. We'll see. I think we're doing no delay. They haven't decided yet. <clears throat> So their hand is Grape Shot, Desperate Ritual, Ascension, Pyroretic Ritual. Just go ahead and keep this off the table. Would not be surprised to see this die to a Grape Shot. Just have them keep my clock in check, basically. It not dying to Grape Shot is absurd here for us because it means I get to uh, Restoration Angel. So the problem with streamer tournaments isn't that you expect the other streamers to ghost. It's that you can't control Twitch chat and Twitch Twitch chat can post cards that are in their hands <coughs> is the is where you run into some issues. The last, last time I played a fandom tournament, uh, someone told BBD one of the cards I had been sandbagging for a majority of the game. And like, that's not something BBD can control, obviously, right? It's just like, comes with the territory, basically. Sure, but like making, making Twitch accounts is free, right? So like, if someone wanted to be a jerk and give away information, you can you can do so with no punishment. I mean, delays make for worse content and the tournaments are free roll anyways. So like, if people are jerks, people are jerks. Like, I get a hundred bucks for showing up for, for reference. For reference, everybody gets a minimum hundred dollar payout in this tournament. So like if if some people are turns, it's like not really the the biggest of deals. Yeah, anybody anybody who's like who would do that? You need to spend more time on the internet, friend. Like keep in keep in mind the last time I turned sub only chat off in here for like five minutes, it took like three minutes for someone to be like wildly offensive and rude, even though they got banned afterwards, because that's just how people work. A lot of a lot of people are genuinely terrible, and the only reason they appear somewhat reasonable human beings is because they understand that society will shun them if they show their true nature. So like, if you remove all accountability from people who are actually terrible, they're just their terrible selves, right? Like when they get to hide behind a username and have no repercussions for the things they type. Just like the sad reality. For people who are asking about alternatives to Scalding Charn, uh, play more Arid Mesas, just other random blue fetches. <coughs> It's marginally worse against burn, but the burn matchup's pretty good, so that's fine. <clears throat> Seems good. It's got these to deal with their creatures. It's got this to answer an early empty or an aria flame. Post post board, they don't just have grape shot. You should expect empty the warrens and aria flame in this matchup as well. They diversify their threats a little bit.
Yeah, that's true too, Space Ace. This, this opponent showed us uh, Ascension Game 1, which is actually kind of rare these days. I feel like Ascension is kind of just bad Aria Flame at this point, but maybe maybe our opponent knows something about Storm that I don't. I definitely don't have a ton of experience with Archetype. Yeah, yeah, exactly that, right? Like, my opponent can take no game actions here, but we're just, like, sitting here waiting because Moto doesn't auto-pass like Arena does. Uh, Storm doesn't play fetches because they don't need the extra fixing in their mana base and they don't want to shuffle cards back into their deck that they bottom with their cantrips. And now, now we've been sitting here waiting for like three minutes while my opponent is just like AFK. Just, just magic online things. Sure. Sorry, just a moment. I have to check in on uh They're also it's really weird. They're also making us play the Twitch Rivals tournament on God accounts today for some reason. Which that made, it made sense when we were doing like a draft tournament that had the weird limited, uh, like sealed deck building for the top eight. So I have to play with like some random account name. Yeah, we're in a decent spot here. We need a way to apply pressure to the table, but hopefully Snapcaster Mage will be able to fill that role for us here. If they miss a land drop here, I th think... All right, so they have they have a land. I think the fact that they have the land means I'm going to just path them. If they didn't have the land, I think I would snap both, snap both this on my turn. But because they have another land anyways, like they potentially have more lands in their hand anyways... Uh, we're three and one, and we're currently up a game in this match, I believe. Yeah, we're we're obligated to use their accounts, which is a little weird. Yeah, I think the offer is nice for people that maybe don't have cards that got invited. But the, the requirement of using their account is strange to me. I'm going to play this tapped and just pass. This means I can't snap bolt this turn, but I still have veto up. And if they don't give me something to snap bolt, I want to be able to snap opt next turn. 
Yeah, the accounts are loaded with cosmetics, so I at least I at least have all my foils. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe they want everybody to play on accounts with foils, because most most people most streamers don't have every foil like we do. We're fancy. Sure. Your arena is updating now. Excellent. All right. So let's path this and then sphere these. Probably Sylvan Scrying. Like three Sylvan Scryings in a land. Yeah, we actually, this is our second time playing against Storm in this league. And earlier, in the earlier league, we did that. We bounced the sphere after exiling goblins. scary they found a past in flames I did not find any rituals though they found another piece of the puzzle as well and again here this is gonna be one of those games where like I had a lot of disruption but I don't have a clock going while we're disrupting them so they're gonna kind of be able to play through what we have going on I don't I don't know Zara I'd have to sit down and think about it I don't know what the, everything is the list in offhand maybe relic could be a fine cut too I don't, I don't update the list on my site until things are legal on Magic Online. And Stream Decker, obviously I have to wait for Stream Decker again. Stream Decker an update as well. <clears throat> it appears to be stuck in a loop, downloading a 7 megabyte patch, attempting to patch, backing up, then restoring, and then starting over again. Man, how... How great would it be if the patch just like didn't patch the day before this tournament? That would be, that would be something. I mean, they're kind of low on cards, except their draw two just hit another draw two. And they also ditched a, they also ditched a pass in flames. They put Sleight of Hand and Grape Shot into their hand. They ditch Gifts and Givens. They have Grape Shot, Manamorphos, and then some cards I don't know. Do we still get the $100 if we can't play? Good question. Asking the hard-hitting ones. Twitch Rivals today on Moto. No delay for today's tournament. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, the castles come into play untapped off of shocks. All the castles have looked good so far. The monocolored utility lands. All right, who's got two thumbs is ready to veto this past in flame flashback. This guy right here.
Well, I've got I've got 50 minutes as of right now to update. So even if this match takes another 20 minutes, we'll have, we'll have a half hour to figure it out. It'll be okay. Anytime now, opponent. Anytime now. Opponent has used nine more minutes off their clock than we have this game. I can still just log in, okay. Um, so do I snap bolt in response to this? I think I do. I guess maybe I'm not supposed to do this because it gives Grape Shot more storm count here. Like I added, I added two unnecessary storm count to it. So I'm going to eight here and they have one card in their hand. <clears throat> Probably draw stepping this next turn. Yeah, I mean if they're if they're spent, click click plus colony close the game close the game really quickly, right? Gotta push the grape shot. Don't want to lose my click. Yep. It gives them a lot of scary live draws. We'd love to draw a Tefri here. So that way we can bounce this D sphere and replay it on this. No, the rivals events on zero delay. Uh, I did board an Ashiok, so we have two copies of those as well. Yeah, every, everybody, the Twitch Rivals event is a streamer tournament, so everybody everybody in the tournament is streaming, Gendy. It's a requirement to play in it. Uh, untapped land is lethal next turn, assuming they brick. They bottomed with this op, so if they hit brick, brick here. All right, sweet, so untapped land is lethal. Uh, Snapcaster Mage is also lethal, right? Yeah. Had a lot of good ones there. Burn Spells, also lethal. Their last card is Pyretic Ritual, we know. 
Like I said, I think the Storm matchup is pretty good for this deck, even when they diversify their threats post board. Detention Sphere does a good job of helping us keep up with them. So we hit the we hit the four one. I like this archetype a lot. I, I honestly so a number of people put up results with this deck jamming Stoneforge Mystic into it. I honestly prefer the Vendillion Click Restoration Angel package to trying to jam Stoneforge Mystic into this deck. I think I think I prefer it without without the blade package. You also gain some sweet sideboard equity because people just like assume you're playing Stoneforge Mystic when you're not, which is kind of sweet. Uh, the sideboard felt pretty reasonable overall. It's a lot of the same same cards that I've been playing for a while. We did not unfortunately get to get any matches where Archangel Avacyn came up, but this card seems sweet. I would probably give it a try again to get a chance to draw it against something like Jund or other fair interactive decks. Deck 4 one's quite often. You're seeing more with this deck as always. You can check it out on my website and my YouTube uh, channel. Um, anyone who's updated their version of Arena so far... What's the, what's the version number in the corner? Because I assume mine's not updated here. I might go upstairs and kick my Windows computer on just to make sure that one updates. I have uh, 16, 8, 4, 7, 2 here, which I assume is not, not the updated version. Sixteen nine nine is the first four of mine after it updated. Yeah, so I'm on the old build. Um, hmm. All right, I'm gonna run upstairs and kick my window system really quick and get that updating, just so I at least have one version in case this randomly decides to lock me out. Would you recommend the Force Negation over the second Spell Pierce or Spell Snare in the main board? I don't know. I think it's... They hedge different things. Modern's always a format where you can, like, pick what you want to beat and pick what you want to lose to. Hey, Greyhound Dog. Thanks for the brand new Prime Support. Welcome, welcome. I'm stripping your Bezo Bucks this way this month and keeping me around. Is it still my favorite modern deck? Um, I like the... The Sahili decks have been really sweet. The Sahili decks are gaining once upon a time, so I'm going to go with Sahili's my favorite. The Just Guy deck's just pretty fair, and, like, playing fair decks tends to be kind of medium. And Saturday, I'm playing Aristocrats today, so... Hmm. I'll be right back. I'm going to run upstairs and uh, get my other computer set up, just in case just in case this decides not to work.
All right. Hey, Ryan um, Graf, thank you for the eight months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hey, Nivik. Thanks for cashing in that Sisters Prime. Is effectively a standard 2020 best of three. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, let me make sure I get my stream decker updated here. Yep. <laughs> Missed the last week or so of streams. Life, you know, hope things are going well. What's going on right now? I'm doing all right. Currently battling a little bit of a plague, courtesy. Courtesy of my children, but you know, it is is what it is. 